How's everybody doing this Saturday? So, today, got unboxing, just new tackle. Well, not new tackle, just more tackle to add the stuff. I'm going to show you guys that. But before I open the box up, got to have us a dip. Okay. I really need to get something better to spit in. Gonna work on that. So, let's go ahead and open this box up. Use my little knife here. It's usually what I use to spread butter. Yeah, a little, little thing. I suppose that's probably the top side. Yeah, that's the top side. We'll go that way. Just a little knife to make sure you need it. Right. There we go. I want to hang this on the wall, but I just don't know how I'm going to do that. Need some paracord. Because it has all the holes for tying it to the side of your leg with paracord or whatever. It also has the belt loop on it. So I can probably figure out some way to hang this on the wall. Then I don't know if I should leave it inside the case or take it out of the case and then hang it on the wall. I don't know. Still thinking about it. Anyways, let's get to, to the unboxing here. Don't need that. Don't need that. Right. Got some more real covers. Nothing special there. They're just the tackle warehouse real covers really like the tackle warehouse real covers they just they work really good and let's see here. I don't know why this is in a bag but whatever keeps it fresh keeps these gloves fresh these are just some hook fishing gloves. They're not really the winter or spring ones. They're actually summer sun gloves. I don't really like wearing gloves when out fishing, but, and I'm not sponsored by them, but I do like their products. They do make really good stuff. So I do like the gloves. I wanted them for the spring fishing and fall fishing just to keep my hands a little bit warmer. I might wear them during the summer once again. I I just can't function with gloves on, so we'll see how this turns out. I'm not really sure about that. So, we're gonna try out these gloves, mostly this spring, so you'll probably see, them, see me wearing them a lot. They actually match the hook, uh, jersey I bought last year mostly I just like that color then we got a whole bunch of jerk baits and a sticker can't forget the free sticker I love the free sticker so got the half ounce and three eighths these are Buckeye torque Torcar, laser Torcar hooks, which I don't really like the hooks because the thingamabobber, what, what whatever you call it, what the heck, the little ping thingy, for whatever reason I can't remember what it's called. It it's big enough that it does stick but it's small enough that it comes out really easy I've actually missed several hookups because of that the hook itself works great it's really stout doesn't bend out doesn't flex it's really good the points really sharp it does fairly minimal damage 
to the fish's lip, which is another really good thing that I like about them. I just wish when they stuck, they stuck a little bit harder. Let's see, what colors are these bad boys? Uh, well, this would be the color of Made in the USA. I actually don't know what color this is. I think this one, I have black and blue. Nothing special there, pretty standard color. I want to say one of these is, I think, a bluegill color. I think this one's the bluegill. Or it's a crawfish color. Oh, I can't remember. They, like, they're almost identical. This one has more purple in it. And, okay, this one's the bluegill, I'm pretty sure. Then this one's just a Californian craw or something. Nothing too exciting there, just pretty much restocking what I have or what I lost last year and what worked really good last year. So restocking those, last year I was just using the black and blue one and the half ounce. It was working really good. Caught almost all my bass on that one jig for the year. Matter of fact, I still have the old jig. It was just completely worn out. It got used a lot. And these are actually swim jigs, but I bounced them off the bottom. A couple of reasons. The swim jig has a better angle to it, so it sits down to where the bass can actually bite on it better, in my opinion. Because, well, let's take one out of here. I'll just show you guys real quick. When they fall down in the water, they'll sit like that with the line hooked on to it so you get a little bit of tension on that line so they're gonna sit a little bit better like that they go through the weeds a lot better they do get stuck in the rocks because of the point but they just work really good um, once again the little keep on there I don't know if you guys can see it with the light Focus, focus, there you go, the little barb on there, it's a little bit too small because instead of pinching the end like they do on normal hooks, they uh, just actually shave it, three points I believe, yeah three points on these torque cars, torque why I can't say certain words when I'm filming, I do not know. That is the mystery of filming. But the barb on there is just pulled out of the hook. Which normally they crimp down the end to make the point and then they file it down a little bit to sharpen it. So they actually have more meat there to pull that little barb out. So these barbs are really small and they don't really stay pegged on there as well. Which isn't too bad it makes it easy to unhook them but you also lose a few more fish that you wouldn't lose otherwise that's my only downside to them other than that they work fantastic and I think I let's grab a soft bait at leave first I have to figure out where crawfish I used last year was like so so these are just the cave well I don't even think they're the cave bees no they're just the strike king river bugs which they don't they actually don't make these and that's the wrong color I think I was using a black and watermelon or green pumpkin. It was like a black and green pumpkin that I was using last year, but I was just using these as a trailer on these jigs. The color's not too big, it's mostly the action that these produce that work really good. Um, they don't 
make these. I think they're still out in circulation right now as these from last year. So you can still find them. There's another website that actually sells these exact same ones now. They actually got the blueprint or something for them. Um, Kate, or not KVD, Strike King stopped producing these ones. They still produce one under the river bug. It's uh, quite a bit different in design. I. I don't. I haven't tried them, so I don't know if they work better or worse or what. All I know is these ones were destroying them last year. Pretty much, we have so many bags of these, and they just work great. And let's see if I can find the actual color of here. There it is. It's that California craw color. It's watermelon red flake on one side and then black and red flake on the other side. These were just crushing them. And what what made them really good is like certain days, the black side having it up would destroy them. Other days you'd flip it over with the green watermelon red flake on the other side up that would be what was killing them so it just depended on a day but if you just threw on a green watermelon or whatever it didn't work you had to have the black on the bottom or the green on the bottom or however you want to look at it and that's what was triggering them as well as the action on it so the color does play a little bit of a role in catching them was it a huge thing no last year i actually did a senko challenge where i was just using random colors of senkos and every single color of the senko was working it was just the action even sometimes the i wasn't even using senkos I was using different styles and really everything was working but the just the action of the Senko sinking was what was destroying them it wasn't really the color so color is not always important it is sometimes anyways that's about it on the unboxing I did come up with a slogan for some merchandise. I will be producing probably end of the month, sometime next month, hopefully. I'm not going to tell you what the slogan is yet until I get it produced and start selling it. I will be making a website where you can buy that stuff. The other thing I wanted to talk about on this show was one of the ponds I fish a lot have lots of videos of that pond supposedly there are pike in that pond I've never caught one I've never seen one I've never seen anybody catch one out of there everybody keeps telling me there's pike in there and recently even one of my friends went there just last summer and swears he saw a pike sunbathing once again I've never seen one I've never caught one out of there and I've fished that place a lot and I haven't always focused just on bass in there and even if that's all I focus on <clears throat> if there's a pike in there I should have caught it by now unless this thing is so finicky that it doesn't bite anything other than real fish which I can't use in there so I gotta come up with some kind of strategy to catch that pike so I'm gonna make a little bit of a mini series this year focusing just on catching that pike out of there just to see if there is or is not I may run it to the end of the summer well, I'm definitely going to run, I'm going to do it in a season. I'm going to run it for 
the rest of the summer until I can't fish there anymore. And if I catch it, the season will end. If I don't, I'm not sure. Because either if I don't catch one, then as far as I'm concerned, they don't exist in there. I, I, like, I have to have some kind of physical proof that something that a pike still lives in there. Everything says there can be pike in there because originally the history of the pond, pike were definitely introduced in there. They were bucket fished in there or bucket dropped in there, illegally put in there at some point. Far long before bass were put in there. It, let's see, I'm trying to remember the history of it. I think they put, uh, I think pike was actually the first thing they put in there, and then they put perch in there. Um, I, I know they put trout in there. They originally put brook trout in there, but because it's a ground-fed pond, there's no streams or anything, and brook trout need streams to actually spawn and to reproduce and to stay alive in there. So the brook trout did not take, they actually died off pretty quick. So now they just have cutthroats, I think rainbows, and hybrid rainbows that they stock in there. There's sunfish in there, there's perch in there, and there's also a, a catfish in there. I'm pretty sure that's it for the fish in there, other than the bass. So, that, as far as I know, there could be pike in there. I have never seen one in there. I've never caught one in there. And everything tells me that it's such a small pond and it's so heavily fished that if there were pike in there, people would at least catch at least one a year out of there. I've never heard of anybody catching any out of there. At least not recently. It's been probably a decade or more since anybody's caught anything out of there. At least two decades actually since anybody's caught a pike out of there. So that kind of tells me the pike have been fished out. And if there is a pike in there, it's super wary of any bait you're going to throw in there. Mostly because it's probably seen just about everything because it's been in there a long time. I don't know how long pike live for. But you'd think if there's still pike in there, there'd have to be a large enough population that they can still breed. And if that's the case, you'd see more of them. And not all of them would be so wary. So I'm not really sure how pike could still be in there. But I'm definitely going to focus a little mini-series whenever I have time to get out there. I'm going to try to make long enough episodes that are entertaining enough to actually make an episode of that. <clears throat> I have a few strategies I'm going to use. And I'm just going to fish the hell out of that pond as much as I can this summer to see if I can catch a pike out of there. I'm definitely still going to be fishing bass out of there. I really don't like bass fishing there because once again it's such a small pond and it's so heavily fished that the pike, or not the pike fishing, but the bass fishing is pretty... It's not hard but it's not the greatest bass fishing because they get caught so many times over and over and over. They've seen just about everything they're pretty alert to most baits you throw in there, so you have to think outside the box. You can't, like, bass jigs still work in there, but you have to really finesse them. <sighs> Crankbaits work in there sometimes. Jerkbaits work in there sometimes. You just have to think, what is everybody else using in this pond? And then use something completely different. Like, the rules of bass fishing do not apply to this pond. Like, during the spring, you don't want to use spring baits. You want to use anything other than what everybody else uses during the spring. 
that's the only way you're going to catch stuff out of there as far as bass go. So it kind of makes sense that if there is a pike in there, it's not going to really bite anything other than something it's never seen before. So I am definitely going to focus on fishing that pond and proving that there is or is not pike in that pond. Anyways, I'm going to end this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, like, subscribe, and wait for that merchandise. Because I think it's going to be a good slogan and everybody's going to like it. At least here in the state of Montana. That's kind of a little hint there. Anyways, see you guys.